In last week's episode, Eric and Alex came out of the sky to join Noah and Matt at the start of the Aguaniche River. Right away, they found themselves in one of the steepest and most challenging sections of the river. They put their heads down and continued to push, moving slowly and taking it a kilometer at a time. Welcome to the land of wild rivers. Good morning, guys. Another beautiful day. No rain this morning. I just walked down to the ledge over there and there is a lot of power. And it sculpted these rocks and it's really smoothed them out. Although these rocks are a billion years old, you can see the power of water and how it erodes them and shapes them to create channels of preferential pathways for the water to pour over. We're in a spot on the map that it's gonna require a lot of work for, for the rest of the day probably. And then we have a while of less work. This trip, like most trips, is a bit of a roller coaster with obstacles and challenges. Our team was nearing the end of the first and most challenging section of river. We had traveled 20 of the first 30 kilometers where the river drops almost 600 feet in elevation. Once we get through this stretch, the river levels out and we should be able to start covering some more distance before entering the next big descent into Lac Pado. Right off the bat today, we have a very big portage around this big set of waterfalls. We're now at the staging area, getting all our stuff portaged ready and getting ready for a bushwhack. through the thick forest to get around the waterfall. Absolutely beautiful waterfall. Uh, but we're just trying to decide if we've made it far enough or if there's other stuff that we're gonna need to portage down below. So we're just doing a quick scout to see if the portage continues or not. What's the word? It's just going down and down. That trail is going up there is more open country. I think it It's about noon now, and we spent the entire morning doing this large portage around all those waterfall sets. But luckily for us, the second half was full of caribou moss and relatively easy travel. I don't think we've ever been on a portage with this much caribou moss. It's almost like we're walking on snow. At the end of the portage, we came to this man-made structure. There's wooden nails and some rusted metal. Not too sure exactly what it is. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think it might be some sort of sled, but I'm not too sure. You just gotta push off it. Nice, dude. We're lined up. Forward battle, forward battle. Oh, 
Nice, dude. I love those. Hell yeah. Couple moves to make? Like, Couple moves for sure. Look at the country we're in right now. Yeah. Ridiculous. It's, it's hard because you gotta focus, but like also. Take in the beauty all at the same time? So this morning we finished the final portage of a huge section of this river that was a crux of this entire trip. Uh, it took a lot of time, it was slow moving, we were traveling maybe six kilometers a day and we finished that this morning. So we had lunch at this beautiful spot and as we came around the corner, we saw this huge rock face. Looking down the lake, we have a lot of these views coming up. Getting that section of the river done is a big load off all our minds because that was a large variable with this trip and that, that's one big variable down. Dinner's ready! Coming! Hi! Oh! Back support. <laughs> I haven't had back support in three weeks. <laughs> Do you want to portage that the rest of the way? <laughs> yeah, totally. Good. It's just cool. This is a really cool cabin. Man, it's the little things, eh? Just sitting in a chair. Oh my god. Oh, boy. I know, I saw. <laughs> oh, we're too late. <laughs> too late. <laughs> that would have been hilarious. You know, you're, you're becoming more angular again. You're not as round. You look tough, man. It's good. Thanks, bro. Still bald, though. We have made it to our campsite for the night. We're currently on a lake called Black Harvey, but we've got ourselves a beautiful beach campsite for the night, which will definitely uh, be a nice place for us to spend the night. We crushed distance today. We made it through a couple big lakes, getting through a tough section of the trip, pretty much since we landed. We're happy that we've made it as far as we have. Now it's time to get some grub in our bellies. So tonight uh, we're actually being transported to Mexico and we're having Alex's and Eric's El Mexicano tacos. What are you boys having tonight? It's a curry chicken, basically. All kinds of good stuff in there. Nothing better than a little hot chocolate at the end of the night to warm your soul. This is an awesome thing to bring on, on camping trips. It really is. Do you ever that moment at the end of the day when you like touch behind your ear, or, like touch your temple under your buff and it's just all crusted like dead bugs and blood? Yeah. Oh, so tomorrow should be a pretty big paddling day. Pretty big. I, I would think that we could maybe get somewhere here and then like just depending on how long this stuff takes. That's this. around Lac Padilla. Apparently that's the tough stuff. Okay, yeah, this looks tough. Like. R5, R2, R5, it's like big stuff. This fire fully warmed me up this morning. Yeah. I've had 
the tiniest chill coming out of my sleeping bag. We're honored to be carrying the RCGS flag on this trip. They are a proud supporter of this trip and helped make this trip happen with the four of us going down the Agu Niche. So we carry this flag with pride and honor and we're very humbled to be a part of this group for this trip. We do it like a little more chill. I don't know how to make this more chill. <laughs> So we're paddling a few swifts and I had to make a few moves where I was putting a lot of pressure on the uh, the paddle and all of a sudden I heard a snap and my $30 paddle that I've been preaching as, as the ultimate paddle for whitewater literally snapped right in half. I lost the paddle part of this, we couldn't find it and uh, luckily I had another paddle on board that I was able to get us out of the set without uh, being in a situation. But, yeah, this is kind of rattling, especially that I thought aluminum paddles had a lot more durability than this. Luckily, between the four of us, we have eight paddles, and we did some paddle swaps, so I could use Alex's spare paddle for, for white water, which is um, a wide blade, um, straight shafted paddle, and I, I think we should be good, but not something you want to see out here. We got to a section of the river where the landscape all around us is starting to be influenced by old forest fires. And it almost looks like pastures where you would see cattle walking through the, the mountain range. But really that's, forest fires in these areas are just a natural part of, of the growth of these forests. And we're trying to think, we, uh, we're, we're having a conversation about how old these forest fires would be because there's not much undergrowth but the, um, the weather here and, and, and the terrain is, is pretty rough. How many years would it take to regrow a forest in Cote Nord, Quebec? Not sure. If you guys know, let us know in the comments below. Where's our sunken rock? I see it. Okay, yeah, I see it. I'll, make, I'll give us the angle, so don't worry about that. Okay, I'll give us the power. There you go, past that rock, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slow, slow. All right. Down the river, we're good. Get ready to, yeah, draw. Get us nice and close to that. Nice, dude. Okay. Draw, draw, draw. Paddle forward, paddle forward. Draw, 
on. We're good. Keep going. Draw, draw, draw. You want to hug this one on the left. Okay, okay, back paddle and draw, and draw. You got it, you got it. Keep back paddling, keep back paddling. We got our angle. There it is. Lunch spot, one of the best lunch spots out there. Yes, sir. Oh my god, look at those prints. Those are fresh. Those are fresh prints. All right, so we just pulled over at the side of the river on a beautiful mountainous lake again. We've crushed about five kilometers. The terrain between here and there has actually all been very mountainous and uh, has been a beautiful paddle this morning. Got to hit some fun sets of rapids. Weather looks like it might be coming in, so we don't know what we have ahead of us in terms of weather, but. Uh, we do know that we've got a lot of lake paddling ahead, which will be nice. So today has been a paddle day. It was really shallow, rocky terrain over there, and you know sometimes you gotta do those those strong paddle strokes, and it bounced off a rock, and the end split. The paddle situation isn't as fresh as it was yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> We're two paddles short because of me. It's not a good place to be, but we're here and we'll make it work. Noah's burning a, a paddle per set right now. Yeah. <laughs> so My average is not good. Hopefully there's only six more <laughs> sets. We decided to make a quick fire so that we could boil some water so we could have a warm drink while we paddle down the lake. Not just any drink, coffee. So we're getting the warmness and also the caffeine. It's starting to get bare hot. Cheers, boys. Cheers, Cheers. fellas. Good, just straight. Yo, I can't believe this lake right now. This is ridiculous. Like, also, we, we messed ourselves up in that last line. Because like I, I was like, yo, 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 I'm turning you sideways so you can like look behind right wow. now. This guy turns you sideways. You guys had that rock broke. wall behind you and it was like, oh my god. I was wondering what you were pointing at. Now I see. We were both just like, you look so small, like just rocking down these like swifts. And I was like, yo, this we is so cool. We were both and then we just beached. <laughs> <laughs> That is the north branch of the uh, uh, Riviera Guaniche coming in on the opposite side of this like big long peninsula thing. And it looks like it's, I mean, based on what we can see on the top of it, it's basically just a big 
it must be a canyon. It's it's just uh, it shows little uh, shelf lines the whole way down, and we can hear it roaring from here, and we're like a kilometer away. Um, so it, it'd be kind of cool to to see it. Would you think it'd be pretty bony? I think it would be pretty bony, <laughs> based on the main branch or the northwest branch that we just finished running. I think it would be pretty bony, but hopefully. As we get downstream and the two merge, we will have plenty of water. That's the hope. We got to our campsite, and this is the longest day we've done since starting the Agunish. We probably paddled about 25 kilometers, mostly lakes, and we're lining ourselves up perfectly for tomorrow, which is another large crux of the trip. Tomorrow, we go to Lac Pado, and around it, apparently, there's a canyon with a lot of rapids and big chutes that we will not be paddling, but we'll be portaging. As we've been paddling over the last day, we've seen a significant change in the landscapes. Slowly, we're seeing a lot more glacial activity as the slopes of the mountains slowly get a little smaller and a lot more caribou moss and open country. We're also seeing a lot of burns in varying stages of regrowth. Based on what we see, there's a chance that all the portaging tomorrow might be through an old burn. It could either be very easy or it could be very, very, very hard. If you guys have watched Float of James Bay, Alex and Eric had a very large slog through a burnt forest and we're hoping that we have uh, swift travels tomorrow. But in the meantime, tonight we're on another beautiful beach site making, some, making our uh, dinner. The sceneries today were breathtaking. We saw a lot of cool mountains and as a geologist I was getting my rocks off on all the glacial activity that we've been seeing. Pretty damn cool, I'll tell you that. It rocks. Come on, come on, Matt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, come on. What, what happened, Alex? I'm up, I'm up this creek without a paddle. <laughs> <laughs> I tried, I tried to get some filtered water while the boat was beached, and uh, that was right after emptying the canoe of all the paddles. So I have nothing to get back to shore. Uh, I don't know, is it the monkey stroke? Is yeah. it the... This is just front crawl, really. Just a good... Oh, Tokyo drifted around Going at a there. pretty good clip. There it is. Alright. Alright. That's how that's done, folks. Looking see. good, Booth. She's looking see. good. I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna yeah. let it this is worth wow, watching. that's thickening, thickening up. Alright, so tonight for dinner, Eric has cooked us up some Bolognese sauce. Yo! <laughs> Josh should definitely be the one Wait, that's in that. Wait, Bolognese. Bolognese. I don't even want to be part of this film. <laughs> Straight from Ireland, shepherd's pie. Straight from Ireland. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this instant mashed potatoes is awesome. You don't have to do anything, you just buy it. And yeah, like I literally just threw it in and just absorbed all that water. This meal? I love this meal. This is one of my favorites. Oh my god. And you've got a little gravy topping. Yeah, you throw the gravy on top, yeah. And wow. then the hot sauce too. I feel like I don't like, like, I don't like this. <laughs> cool, well then maybe you should go to bed. <laughs> yo, yo. I see, I really, I want to go to bed, but there's this all this warm sand around the fire that's keeping my feet warm, and it's really nice. And friends and stuff. Oh dear. And friends. <laughs> and friends. Yeah, and friends and stuff. Yo, we're
Good morning guys. It is day 22 out here and we're just packing up camp about to start the second large crux of the trip. The Agunish has three large variables. The first was that, that very steep section that we did a lot of lining and portaging around. The second is a similar section going in and out of a lake called Lac Pado. There's gonna be a lot of shoots, a lot of class five rapids, and potentially a lot of portages. I expect today is gonna to be a lot more decision making on the water and a lot more technical lines that will have to line and potentially portage. This forest fire that's around us may influence our ability to portage, but we'll see. All portage ready. Strong forward. Hard, hard, hard. Hard, hard, hard. Okay, we're good. This next set is an R2, R3 that goes instantly into an R5. So we're very cautious. We're just gonna line this until we uh, get around all this junk. All right, so we are in the middle of a big string of rapids. And some of these rapids actually drop off quite a bit into little mini waterfalls. So we're currently making our way around them, lining as much as we can. But there are gonna be a few that we have to portage, the first being this one right here in front of us. So we've just pulled all the gear out of the canoe and we're gonna make our way around. We got a big portage over these rocks. Rock portaging is great because it's open land, but you really gotta be aware of each footing step. You gotta be like a billy goat. making moves out here. All morning we've been portaging and lining these big sets of rapids. We're getting close to Lac Pado, very close. We're having a quick lunch break and we're gonna work our way down there after. The farther we get, the better. We've scheduled two days for this section 
and so far we're doing pretty good. The terrain's pretty rocky, a lot of ankle breakers, so we gotta take our time, especially when it starts raining, which just happened to us. Gotta watch your step out here. All right, so it is currently 2.45 in the afternoon and we have made it. We're gonna continue on and see if we can make it partway through the next set coming out of Lac Pedo. The calm before the storm in this eerie dead forest around us. Spooky. We got to the R4 and R5 of the lower section of Pado Lake, of Lake Pado. It's gonna be a line for sure, maybe a portage. All right guys, back in portage country. This time we are in an active burn. Not an active burn, but a burn that is still very prevalent here. So far not too bad, but up ahead looks kind of Thick. Smells really nice in here though. All right, let's just do this. Do I look cool? Does that make me look cool? I can't really see where my footing, which scares the hell out of me. Cause I have so much weight on my back. Oh shit. Big, big rocks and big holes. Very hard to see where you're going and to stay on your feet. We're almost out. All right, so we just had a very difficult portage around a big waterfall. Brutal. <laughs> Wet, slippery, thick. That's still pretty gnarly. I bet I wipe it all away. Bugs are thick. Bugs are thick, boy. Bugs are thick. It was getting late in the day and our team arrived at a tricky set of rapids. The shorelines didn't offer a clear view to do a proper scout and the water was too deep for us to line the boats. There didn't seem to be a big drop in elevation, but we also couldn't see what was around the corner if we did run into any trouble on this set. 
the easiest way forward was to paddle, and our team decided that this was a risk we were comfortable taking. Forward! Alright. Hand your river, man. Paddle strong. Strong! Strong! Okay, you're good. You gotta go left. Back paddle. You're going right. Yeah, go right. Strong through here. Draw. Perfect, straight. We're gonna go right into this eddy. Yeah. Right, dude. You had to risk it for the biscuit. You had to risk it for the biscuit on this. Nice. Woo! Yo, paddle slap for that one. Woo -hoo -hoo! That was all on the line, man, going <laughs> yeah. in blind. Are you good there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. made it. It was a very, very difficult thing. We did it at the end of the day, which you typically don't want to do. You don't want to be messing around with big sets of rapids when you're tired and hungry, but we did and we made it out alive. All is well. We got to camp pretty late. The sun's already setting probably around eight o'clock. We finished the day with lining a set of class five rapids. It was pretty extreme, but we all got out safe and sound. We had a few spills today. The rocks were extremely slippery with all the rain we got today. <laughs> Eric fell like five times. Matt fell three or four times and hurt himself, but he was able to recoup. And we're just lucky we all made it here without any injuries. I would say overall, we're about three quarters done this Lac Pedo uh, rapid section. To, so we did a full day of hard work and we are very excited to just be sitting at the camp you get some hot food in our belly, and then go right to bed. Matt, how's your knee? It's okay. Yeah? Yeah, it's fine. How's your wrist? Wrist is okay, shoulder's okay. <laughs> Who else did I hurt? We got through the first section, we were all pumped. We got to Lac Pado, Lac Pado, and it was beautiful, it was, felt like eerie, felt like you're on Mars. And then, we were like all optimistic coming into this, this section, and then we got clapped with rain, we got clapped with a portage, everyone's falling. And like gnarly lines, like, like dropping canoes off waterfalls. Dropping canoes off waterfalls. Yeah, today was actually a roller coaster of emotions. It's the only way to put it. Yeah, I think the Riviera Aguaniche is a roller coaster of emotions. The, whole, the river itself is the roller coaster. Whoa. It's true. Is that, is and that? we are the emotion. Just riding on there. Just pieces, <laughs> pieces of organic matter. Just pieces of organic matter filled with emotion. Love, hate, despair, anguish. 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 Look at my belly button. Oh. Oh. Yo, let me let me move over here. Oh. Holy <laughs> smokes! <laughs> Are you kidding me, bro? 
Let me see that. Dude, that's insane. Dude, that's... They were camping in your belly button. Yeah. They bet. Oh, oh no. shit. I'm gonna check mine now. Yeah. Okay. Oh, they got you. Oh, 